Now we're going to look at these clamped string normal modes in the real world. But let's go ahead and write the equation down again. Y in x of t, because we decided there are discrete numbers of these normal modes. They each can have their own amplitude. And we went with sine and cosine. Sine omega in that specific frequency over v x times the cosine of omega in t is how we were writing it. And we decided omega n was n pi over l v. So these are the solutions where every piece of the string moves at the same frequency. And we learned that only happens at certain frequencies. So what we're going to do is do that for a real string, like you see here. So remember that everything in here is defined, well, almost everything, is defined by the properties of the string. The amplitude is arbitrary, but omega n depends on the length. And remember, the velocity of the medium square root of tension over mass density. So this is t, mu, and this is l. t, mu, and l. Okay. It's all depends on those things. So for our string, let's see what those are. The length from one end of the string to the other between the clamps is 3 meters. The tension is you can put a controlled tension in a string by having it end on a little pulley and hanging a weight. So I've got 330 grams here. So the tension is 0.33 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. Uh, let's see. And that's about, these are all about 3.2 newtons. And then finally, the mass density I measured just by weighing the string, mu is 0 0.0023 kilograms per meter. And that's corrected for the stretch. Right? The mass density goes down when you stretch an elastic string because the same mass becomes longer. So if we see what those numbers give us, we can calculate the velocity of a wave on a string. On this string is t over mu, and it's about comes to about 37 meters per second. That's pretty fast. And we could also calculate where the normal modes, at what frequency they should occur. For example, the first one, omega 1, is the fundamental normal mode. n equals 1, so it's pi over 3 meters um, times 37 meters per second, which, if you throw in your calculator, is a little over 6. It's about uh, 6.1, or we could just call it 6 hertz. 6.1 hertz, say, around 6. So omega 1 should be 6.1 hertz, and then omega 2, then it's just linear with n. Omega 2 is 12 hertz, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, you know. Goes up by about 6, but not exactly. So I showed you that end of the string. Now let's look at this end of the string. So this uh, little oscillator is going to push the string up and down. So if you think about it, these normal modes are just a kind of a solution. We have to actually make them happen. We'll describe an arbitrary motion of the string later. But this is what's going to excite the string at different frequencies. And when it hits a normal mode, or w we will see if at certain frequencies it hits a normal mode where the whole string is moving together. That's what we're going to try to figure out. OK? So I need to be over there. So let me just kind of limbo my way over here. Let's see if I can. This is certainly very classy. Here we go. OK. I need to be over here. OK, here we go. Oh, that didn't go well. OK, so here we are at about 2.1 hertz. And I will turn up the amplitude. And you can see it slowly pushing its way up and down at 2.1 hertz. And if you look at the string, it's kind of all jumbling around at uh, different frequencies. It doesn't have any motion that looks like it's all the same frequency. So I'm going to start raising it up uh, 3.1 hertz. And let me pull this down a little bit. There we go. At uh, 3.1 hertz, also not so great. Uh, 4.1, dancing kind of funny. Um, 5.1, still jumping around. And now let's get to that 6.1. And there, well, it at least hit a bigger motion. Right? Now it's all moving nice and large. And that's actually a normal mode. Okay? I'll show you in a little bit how we can really tell it's a normal mode. But right now it has the shape you would expect 
for a normal mode. And let's think about what this shape looks like. So now I've got to go back over here. This might just. <laughs> that, was, that was better, sort of. Um, the shape of the normal mode comes from the, the space function here, omega n over v x, right? So we think, what should that shape look like? This is uh, omega n over v. Well, we're at omega 1. Omega 1 is pi l v. So you say pi l v over v. I'm sorry, uh, pi over l v over v is just pi over l. So what we end up here is pi over l x in the space part. Okay. Um, well, if you're familiar with sinusoids, you know that if you were to put a 2 here, let's multiply it by 2 over 2, you get 2 pi over something x. And this something, in terms of waves, is the wavelength. So the wavelength of the first normal mode is 2L. So if you were to think about freezing this thing while it's at a big amplitude, it would basically just be half of a sine wave. So the real wavelength is twice that, of course. So the real wavelength to go through an entire wave, you have to go up for a sine and you go down. Right? So we do have half a wave here. Right? And we know that's correct for n equals 1, is it should be half a wavelength. n equals 2 would already put a 2 here. From the n, you'd have 2 pi over l. The wavelength for n equal 2 should be the whole thing, uh, the entire length from 0 to l. So let's see if that works out here. And we can go to n equals 2. So we're at uh, 6.1. For the fundamental, so the next one should happen at about 12.1. So 7, 8, jumping around, nothing exciting is going on. 11.1 and 12.1. There we go. Oh, I guess it should be 12.2. I can fine tune it. There you go. It is biggest around 12.2. Around and now you can see it does look like a, um, a full sine wave. If you consider if you were to freeze it in time, it looks like a full sine wave between 0 and L, as we predict the wavelength should be for the second normal mode. Then we can ask ourselves, you know, does it keep going? Well, the next one should be at about 18 point something, 18 and change. And let's see, 17, 18, there it is, the third normal mode. And the wavelength uh, should be here. It should be about 2 thirds, from, uh, two -thirds of L would be the wavelength. And you can see that's basically what's happening. Then you can go on and look at these things all day and find higher and higher ones. There's one. And the quick way to figure out which normal mode you're looking at is not to try to think about the sine wave wavelength, but just to count the antinodes. So in normal modes, we call this a node where it's essentially not moving, and this an antinode where it has the biggest amplitude. So node, antinode. So the normal mode number is basically the number of antinodes that you see. You can show that mathematically. So this is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8th. That's the 8th normal mode. Let's come down here to the seventh. So we can see that they're behaving pretty much as they should. Oh, that's the wrong one. In terms of their wavelength and their frequencies. But now, is there, are they really all moving at the same frequency? So the one way we can figure that out is with this. This is a strobe light that will strobe at whatever frequency we want. So right now, it's strobing at, uh, or right now, the sort of the, the view of the string is blurred because uh, it's moving faster than the frame rate of the camera, or in my case, faster than the frame rate of my eye. And so it looks like a blur. But if we only show it to you at a certain time, very short strobes, then you'll see through the strobe effect, we can see if we see the string moving. And there you see it. So you're kind of seeing, it looks like it's in slow motion, and that's because the frequency of the light is slightly off from the frequency of the string. It's kind of like you're seeing beats. But if I adjust it and get it just right and really make it match, so I'm trying to get the strobe light to match 43.2, it'll pretty much stop. And the fact that it stops is how we know that the whole string is moving together. Yeah, I don't know if I can quite get it to stop. Let's see. One more down. That's pretty slow. That's close enough to a stop. And you can see the whole string at an instant in time is moving together because it pretty much slows the whole string down the same everywhere along the string. See, everything's moving at that same slow frequency as we go down the string. So that's further evidence that it really is, it really is a normal mode. There we go. That pretty much stopped it right there. And here, yeah, it's about exactly the same, 43.2 hertz. 
So those are the normal modes on the real string. And then the final fun thing is to sit here and say, how high can it go? There's a lot of normal modes. And every year in the class, I pretend that I'm hitting a higher level than I've ever hit before, and they always fall for it. But I won't do that to you. You guys are too savvy for them. All right, so enjoy the normal modes. <laughs>